Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing SNC Lavalin Group stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we could determine if it's a buy or a sell. SNC Lavalin Group provides engineering, procurement, and construction services to various industries including mining, oil and gas, and clean power. The company is headquartered in Montreal, Quebec, Canada and was founded in 1911. It went public in 2002 and currently trades on the TSX. It also trades on the pink sheets. The ticker is SNCAF. It has offices in over 50 countries and operations in over 160 countries. In the past, the company has paid legal fines in regards to paying kickbacks and bribes. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 4.8 billion market cap. They're trading at $27 a share and they have 176 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow in 2017, 18, and 19, but a small positive in 2020. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that's positive in two years, negative in two years. Revenue is a sales for the company. That peaked at 10 billion in 2018. It did drop a lot in 2020, mainly due to COVID and lower demand. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. The difference between those two numbers is the gross profit. And they did have their lowest gross profit in 2020 at 125 million. It was nearly 2 billion in 2017. Below that is operating expenses and then operating income and they did have negative operating income in 2019 and 2020. Then below that is the interest payments. They paid 105 million of interest on their debt in 2020, but that is much lower than 2019 and 18. Then below that is other income and expenses. This is usually impairments or write-offs, then pre-tax income and your taxes. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And that is a big negative in 2020 at negative 965 million. They also had a big negative in 2018. The reason for the big negative in 2018 was the other income and expenses of negative 1.4 billion. So their income statement looks a bit volatile. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates or loses from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. They did generate positive operating cash flow in 2020, negative in prior years. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. And they did have negative free cash flow in prior years, a small positive in 2020. In 2017, they issued 1.2 billion of capital stock and $4.2 billion of debt. In 2018, they added about $500 million of debt. It looks like they're paying down a lot of debt in 2019 and a little bit in 2020. So I guess they had a lot of cash on hand from the capital issuance and the debt issuance to get them through 2019 and 20 and also to pay down some debt. Let's look at the capital structure. 2.6 billion of equity, 2.5 billion of debt. They're 51% equity, 49% debt. Their net debt is 1.3 billion, and their WAC is 9%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 2.1 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.9 billion. We divide that by 176 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $11. They're trading at $27. So they're trading at a 150% premium. It's a sell according to the model. 
Simply Wall Street is in the other direction. They're at $51 a share. So they're saying the stock is undervalued. So Simply Wall Street is expecting them to generate much more free cash flow than I'm expecting. With all the negatives in the past, it was hard to estimate future free cash flows. Plus, with their past legal issues, I didn't want to make their expected growth too large. So I think it was pretty modest, my expectation. In the past three months, nine analysts priced this stock. The average price was $27. The low was $20, the high was $32. So my valuation is much lower than the analyst expectations. This stock has gotten hammered over the years, mainly due to their legal issues. You can see the stock price peaked at about $55 a share, but it was cut in half. It's down to $27 today. The company drastically cut their dividend in 2019. They were paying 29 cents a share. Now they're down to 2 cents a share. That's a 0.29% dividend yield. The industry average pays a 1.2% dividend. The bottom 25% of the market pays a 1.5% dividend. They're definitely in the bottom 25%. Analysts are expecting their dividend to grow to 0.4%, so not much growth there. And their beta is 1.46, so the stock moves one and a half times the market. The stock has increased 29% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 increased 65%. The 52 week low was 1750, the high was 30. The stock is trading above its 200 day and 50 day moving average. About 600,000 to 700,000 shares are traded each day on this stock. Almost all the shares outstanding are on float. 67% of the shares are held by institutions and a little over 1% of the shares are shorted. Analysts are expecting their earnings to grow 37% while the industry 28% and the market 23%. But analysts are only expecting their revenue to grow 0.6% the industry 1.1% and the market 7.5%. If you include dividends, this stock went up 46% in the past year, while the industry 86% and the market 79%. But in the past three years, the stock went down 48%, the industry up 23% and the market 30%. And in the past five years, this company went down 36%, the industry 63% and the market 60%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be at $4,500 today. The biggest shareholder owns 20% of the stock. The next biggest is 14%. Then RBC owns 10%. Then FMR, then Vanguard. Let's look at the financial ratios. We can't look at the PE because they have negative net income. When a company has negative net income, we look to the price of sales ratio. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.7. So investors are paying 70 cents for $1 revenue. That's a great price to sales ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.9. And the way you calculate book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in a balance sheet and they have 2.6 billion of equity, negative 1.4 billion of tangible equity because they have 4 billion of intangible assets on their balance sheet. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 0.9, so they can cover 90% of their current liabilities with their current assets. And their current assets are 1.2 billion of cash and 2.3 billion of receivables. It does appear the company's undercapitalized. They had $46 million of free cash flow, but they currently have negative $223 million of working capital and a $14 million dividend payment. So they're going to be short almost $200 million. So they may need to take on more debt to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on two other companies in the same industry as SNC. If SNC has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So we can't look at their PE because they have negative net income. All the companies have a really good price to sales ratio. They have the worst. They're doing the best in price to book. They're doing the worst in current ratio. The worst in ROE. They do have the lowest amount of debt of all the companies. And they're much bigger than the other companies on this list. 
and they pay a really small dividend, Bird pays a big dividend, and IEA doesn't pay a dividend at all. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 150% premium, but this company has been around a really long time. They do provide a product that's sorely needed, especially during a time when companies are trying to build out their infrastructure. The big negative is all the bribery and kickbacks, but that was in the past and hopefully they learned their lesson. I ranked their free cash flow 6 out of 10, their revenue 5 out of 10, and their ratios 2 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.